Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and in this video series, I'm going to be giving you some tips to help you pass the ASE exam. This series specifically covers the B2 paint and refinish. So if you're looking to pass your ASE exam, watch this video, and I'm going to give you some tips, and I'm also going to provide you some resources down the link to help you study and pass this exam. Now, we all hear safety first. We know it's important, but we really don't abide by it all the time. But it's important, and I'm going to tell you why. Let's say that you uh, have a car, you know, one that Chip Boos had built, you know, a real expensive, high-end, one-of-a-kind car, and let's say it's worth a million dollars and he gave it to you. Well, I'm sure that you'd want to take care of that car. You'd do everything that you could to protect it, keep it from getting damaged. Uh, would you go to Walmart and park it in the middle of a lot of other cars? Would you park it by shopping baskets? No, you'd probably not do that. You'd probably keep it in your garage if you had one. Well, if you take that much care and that much effort of a car, don't you think that you're worth a million dollars? So I think that it's important for you to, to put safety first and really can, you know, think about this. Because there's been a lot of people in this industry that you know, is making good money and very, very successful that had to leave the industry. They become sensitive to the paints, especially in the paint refinish side, become sensitive to the paints and they can't be around it anymore. So I think it's worth your time and your effort to practice all the safety rules and abide by them. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're looking to go in this career, you're in school, or you're a technician wanting to get your ASE certification. Well, not only will this test information help you pass the test, but it's also to help you now, I know it may be kind of confusing, you know, we watch TV and even in some shops, you know, they're not abiding by all the rules and you think that's just the way it is. But remember, if you're willing to take that much time and effort for a car, remember that you're more important than that car. Would you trade your eyesight, your, you know, for a million dollars or two million or a billion? Probably not. And I hope you have enough value in yourself to where you wouldn't want to exchange something like that. Many people so quick to get a grinder and start grinding without a face shield or safety glasses and weld without a helmet and so many of those things that could damage our eyes or any other part of our body. Paint would finish specific, you know, you must wear a respirator. You don't want to become sensitized to these products, especially on the paint side. I mean, there's harm, harmful chemicals that we're dealing with. You don't want to breathe them, you don't want them to get on your skin, you need to protect yourself so that you can have a lifelong career in this if you wish to do so. Now we're going to talk about right to know. What is right to know? Well, that is a law passed by OSHA that employees must provide you with documentation with what chemicals you're working with. So for example, if you work at a company that blends chemicals and uh, you're wanting to know, well, I wonder if these things are harmful, if I should be wearing certain PPE or, you know, and you ask your boss, well, what is it? What's in this? And he tells you, well, don't worry about it. You just do what I say. You know, I'm looking out for you. You know, that's not legal. That, that is illegal. They should have the right to know, which is Ilmes DS sheets, basically what it is. And the Ilmes DS sheet is a material safety data sheet. And that has all the ingredients, all the hazards, and all the information about the product. And they should have one of, them, one of these MSDS sheets for each product that you use in the shop. And required by law, an employer has to have these documents available for you. This may be in the break room or somewhere in the shop that you can get to at any time. Now OSHA's focus is to keep employees safe. You know, that's their job. They want to make sure that employers are treating their employees right and they're they are working in a safe environment. Now I'm not going to go real deep in OSHA. It's very important to learn about them, but I do got a video introduction to OSHA down in the description. And I encourage you to go watch that and learn more about OSHA and who they are and what they do. And that will help you prepare for this test. Okay, now let's talk about your spray environment and your spray equipment. Now also there are laws that regulate what kind of environment you spray in and what spray equipment you use. There's a new 6H rule that shops must abide by and basically this talks about what kind of booth is allowed. You know, can you spray primer in the shop or can't you? You know, the new ruling is if it's less than three ounces they are allowing it. If not, it must be in a spray booth. Another law in that 6H rule is cleaning your gun. You know, we used to get thinner, put in the gun and spray it you know, either in the booth or, you know, wherever just to clean it out. Well, they don't allow that anymore, so now we have to come up with new methods of how to clean the paint guns without spraying it. Siphon feed, 
you know, those are pretty much outdated. What we're using now is HVLP and LVLP, which produce less overspray. And what the overspray, the big, big concern with overspray is the VOCs. You know, that's the, the stuff that comes out and gets in the atmosphere. And that's what they're trying to eliminate. How much of this contaminants, how much of this VOC is getting into the atmosphere. They're trying to reduce that. And by the right spray equipment, the right spraying environment, you know, we know that we're doing all we can to reduce the amount of VLCs that do enter the atmosphere. In fact, guns now have regulations, and if you buy a gun, it should have a certificate in it stating that it meets the requirements. So the days for just grabbing any gun and spraying in any environments are over, for shops anyway. Now, there's some information about the 6H rule down in the description. You know, I encourage you, highly encourage you, because there's a lot of information that you need to know uh, for yourself and for the test. The 6H is more designed for the shops. Uh, DIY is kind of a different category. It uh, doesn't really affect those like it does a shop. So be sure that you learn all you can about the 6H rules. Now let's talk about respirators. Now we know that respirator is important and anytime you're spraying you need to have a respirator. Now there's basically two types. There's the cartridge type which is a charcoal cartridge and it filters the air before you breathe it. It removes the, the chemicals and there's an air supply. Now there's something you need to know if you're using the, the filtered respirators is you must be, and I mean it's required by law, that you be test fitted annually. So each year if you're at a shop or a school you need to make sure that you're test fitted. Now what we do at the school is our 3 ohm representative, he comes in and he does our test fitting for us. Now if you're in a shop and you're spraying all the time, I highly recommend to use the air supplied respirator. I mean that's going to provide you with the cleanest air possible. And for test fitting, I've also got a, a video down there for you to watch. Be sure and go watch that and learn more about test fitting and respirators. And that will give you some information to help you pass this test. Now I know safety is not the most important subject, but it's something that we need to cover, something you need to know for yourself, and it's something that you'll need to know for this ASE exam. And the last thing we're going to cover is PPE, Personal Protective Equipment. Now we've talked about the respirator, that obviously is one of the pieces of that, but we also need to think about our skin. You know, these chemicals, they, you know, we can breathe them, inhale them, and that's not very good, but they can also absorb in our skin. You know, the paints used to have a lot of lead in them, they've removed that from most of the toners, but there's still some out there that have lead, and we all know the hazards of lead. But a lot of these paint chemicals also have what you call isocyanates. And that's what's very harmful for you, especially in your products that, that, that is a 2K, part of, uh, 2K product, has a catalyst, and you mix it together. You know, that's a very harmful product. So we need to wear gloves. We need to wear a full suit. And they've got hoods, uh, eye protection, make sure your eyes are not exposed, and uh, hearing protection. So that's some of your PPE that you're going to need. You know, really, even if you're wiping down a car, you should be wearing gloves so that the chemicals from that wax and grease remover or whatever you're using is not absorbing into your skin. And I know many painters, including myself, you know, back in the day, you know, we used to clean guns and with thinner and, you know, it used to get on our skin and, you know, that's not too good. As we become more educated, more aware of the, the problems that causes, we need to become more conscientious and make sure that we protect our skin you know, our eyes, our lungs, and this way you can be in this industry for a long time and you won't have to leave the industry, not by your choice, but due to your health. And that's the good news. If you follow the safety recommendations and you're safe with the work that you do, you can stay in this industry and you don't have to leave because you become sensitive materials. Well, this video is just a quick overview of the first section, which is safety. I'll be getting into more of like the preparation and paint things in later videos. I know safety is not the most interesting sub subject to learn about, but it is very important for yourself and there's tips here to help you pass the test. And also, like I mentioned, there's a lot of information about OSHA and, uh, you know, fit testing and things like that down in the description. And I highly encourage you to go watch those videos to learn about OSHA and test fitting. And this will better prepare you for the ASZ exam. Well, that wraps up the first video. I hope that you found these tips useful. And I hope that it helps you study and pass your ASZ exam. For more tips and training, be sure and go to collisionblast.com. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.